my name is Kate Varfalameva. I'm Mobile Housing Project Manager and Research Specialist at Knowledge Exchange Resilience at ASU. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present our projects today, our research. It's very exciting for me because it started thanks to OpenStreetMap, thanks to mapping. And the topic of my presentation today is utilizing OSM OpenStreetMap to discover hidden vulnerabilities to extreme heat. And a little bit about us, as I mentioned earlier, I work at Knowledge Exchange for Resilience at ASU, and our mission is to support Maricopa County, which is the biggest county in Arizona and eventually the whole state, by sharing knowledge, catalyzing discovery, building solutions to increase community resilience. And we also partner with Yacht Mappers a lot, and the project that I'm going to present to you today was done thanks to working with Yacht Mappers. I'm pretty sure many of you know who is this, but anyway, Yacht Mappers is the network of universities around the globe with the mission to provide an opportunity to students, to youth, to learn how to map and how to support humanitarian projects around the world. So um, did you know, you probably already know from earlier presentations today that Heat is the deadliest hazard in the U.S., and every year more people die in the U.S. from heat than from all other natural disasters combined. Every year we have over 1,300 heat deaths just in the U.S. due to extreme heat. And surprisingly, three states in the country, Arizona, California, and Texas, they are accounted for the highest burden of all heat-related deaths comparing to all other states, which is 43%, which is quite a lot for just three states out of all other states that we have. And since I'm from Arizona, we are very concerned about heat exposure, building heat resiliency, and this is why we focus so much on heat. And um, when we speak about high temperature, um, this is the right side. Yeah, this is the right side. So you may think that people die just because it is too hot. So we did some data analysis, and uh, mm -hmm. in 2019 we built this table uh, with this graph. We calculated predicted heat day deaths based on weather, and then we overlaid them with actual number of heat related deaths. And we discovered that predicted mortality estimates are not explained by weather patterns, which means that high temperature is not the direct reason why people are dying, but there are other factors that make high temperature so deadly to some of the people. This is very important to distinguish. And since, so we started to look into why heat deaths are happening. And Another number that surprised us a lot that 30% of all heat-related deaths in the county were inside. This was indoor heat-related deaths. And this is surprising because your house, your building is supposed to protect you from the natural disaster. In our case, it's heat. And this was not happening for one third of people who died from heat. People were dying inside their homes. So we started to look into this uh, population and we discovered that over the last years historically overage indoor heat deaths in Maricopa County 30 percent happened inside mobile homes specifically and in some years it reached even 40 percent and this was very surprising and alarming because mobile homes manufactured housing they take only five percent of total housing stock in Maricopa County which is extremely disproportional. So we started to look into mobile homes. And if you don't know what mobile homes are or how they look in Arizona, this is a quick example, mobile homes. This is the type of affordable housing. Uh, it can look really nice as in, as in the picture on top, or it can look not as nice. They are very different, especially depending on the year they were built. They manufactured on the factory and then delivered to the lot where people, otherwise they rent the lot and the house or they rent just the house. And the thing about this is this is usually a community. This is mobile home park. So there is the landlord who owns the land under those houses and manage everything. And as you can see in the pictures, mobile home parks, they, are very, they have very high density. Uh, they don't have any front yards. So this is just a quick overview of how mobile home parks look like in Arizona. And there are mobile home parks all over the country. They look a little bit different. 
So we started from analyzing different data, and this is uh, the map that helped us to make the biggest discovery. So we took the number of mobile phone uh, parts, which is which are white dots. We overlaid them with in dot it related dots, red dots, and with uh, yellow dots who are recipients of utility assistance. And we noticed this interesting area where we have a lot of kid related deaths and a lot of mobile home parks, but a very small number of utility assistants. So more heat more heat deaths, indoor heat related deaths in mobile home parks happened where they did not have any utility assistance. So we started looking into this region and my particular focus in this project and today is on linking heat as the health hazard through the housing systems. And now question to you, how many mobile homes do you see here? Like how many of the actual buildings do you see here on this map? Yes, exactly. You see nothing. And this is the uh, satellite imagery. This is the area I showed you before. And if we just uh, zoom in on, this little circle just part of the mobile home parks. This is how it looks like from the satellite imagery. It's very dense. It's a lot of buildings. It's a lot of mobile homes. And when we looked at this, it was very alarming to see the overwhelming density of mobile home and RVs that they have here there, but they're not represented on the maps. They they're not on the map because this is private property and like people just don't map them. They don't map those buildings. They're just the roads. So the problem is when people are not on the map, they do not exist. There is no data. No one sees this problem. So our goal was to find these people, to move, to put them on the map, because naming them, put them on the map, we create data and then we can solve the problem because data is very powerful. So eventually our methodology was uh, that we created a project on teacher Sam. We outlined this area. This is the actually a small part of Mesa in Maricopa County. Uh, we outlined this area that suffered disproportionate numbers of heat-related deaths and high density of mobile homes. We used Bing aerial imagery and we decided to map the buildings. There was no buildings on the map. So uh, residential buildings, we talked as residential building, other buildings, just like regular buildings. And mobile homes, this is when things became very interesting. Uh, there is a tag for mobile homes in OSM, and we eventually used a building static caravan. And here you can see just little tiny part of one part, how much we mapped, how much was missing on the map. But we run into one challenge that eventually come from this uh, point that people are not on the map, no one knows what's happening with them. And the challenge was how to identify RVs for the permanent living. This is very important because RVs, trailers, they designed for temporary living when you want to go on like fun vacation outdoor and spend a couple weeks there. But in this case, people, some populations are put in a such vulnerable economic situation where they have to use RV as a permanent living because this is their last resort. This is what they can afford. And to discover these uh, reasons for heat deaths, it was very important to know how many of them. So there was no tag in OSM to identify RV as a permanent living, so we have to be very creative. So unfortunately, we did not trace individual RVs. Instead, we created the polygons around the area with RVs, as it was like five, 10, 20 of them. And we just used two tags, uh, one land use residential to identify that this is for permanent living, and another one that people know that this is their RV with, and the tag for this is tourism caravan site. So, and the idea here that developing a separate tag would allow to distinguish the built environment with clean mobile home parks, which is very important if you want to create a new detailed level of data. So eventually over the summer of 2019, we met and validated this area in three months, thanks to support from youth members. It was 
over 2,000 mobile homes, over 600 RVs. We, and the area is around 5,000 square miles. Again, this is just a little part of uh, Mesa that we did at that time. And again, there is a comparison how the map looked before, just a couple blocks, and this is after. How much buildings we mapped, how much data we created, how much data we added to the map, how much people we put on the map, to, so everyone can see that there is a problem, there are people who need help. And the result of this effort was, uh, was huge. It became a fundamental feature of our ongoing research that has been happening for four years. We used this data as a visual layer on JS. We were able to calculate units, roof, and purpose surface, and to put this data into design project. And as I said, this project has been happening for four years so far and it's still ongoing. And it's just a very brief overview of what we were able to accomplish thanks to creating this data set eventually, thanks to putting people on the map. Uh, we mobilized city and county for heat resiliency. We created a heat solution mitigation guide. I was working on it for like many months. It has around 50 different heat solutions how to mitigate heat for different levels of stakeholders. We analyzed a lot of um, mobile home residents. We did a lot of survey with them. And we proceeded also improving our data set. We eventually created a data set with almost 1,200 mobile home communities. This is statewide mobile home park data set, that just, which is available online. Everyone can use it. We, uh, and tomorrow, my colleague Miriam will tell you how we used uh, MapSwipe to do this. We also did a lot of publications, media stories. Exposure on media was also a big part to solve this problem. We eventually got a lot of community partners to work on this problem. And you can see the picture of top, on the top. We also tested different solutions in the mobile home parks. We, this one was the special roofing material. And I'm very proud to show you this graph because this arrow showed you that after 2019, there was significant increase in use and type of mobile homes, meaning that more people started mapping mobile homes. Uh, this, this, our research, our funding facilitated uh, this work on mobile home communities, which, uh, which was really rewarding for us to notice. And now we are in the pilot phase uh, project. Uh, we are mobilizing community of actors to create different prototype solutions. Like here you can see the uh, heat alarming system and different policies to implement in Arizona. We design a heat resilient mobile home park. So, uh, this project is the great example that data gathering is one way to better understand the impacts of climate change on our local communities. And thanks to OpenStreetMap, which is a powerful tool to create local micro data that can help uncover missing insights and see where vulnerable people are and where they are falling between the caps. Thank you so much for your attention. You can scan this QR code, which, which will lead you to our website page with way more information about this research, where you can see this heat mitigation guide. And you're more than welcome to ask any questions and email me if you want to collaborate. Thank you.